BitTorrent BTT could partner up with Chia and do some green mining. Surprise everyone. All right, you guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'd appreciate it if you hit the bell, hit subscribe, hit the like button, comment down below. Helps us a lot with the algorithm so the channel can become more popular. And I'd like you to do that now. If you don't like the value I give you in the video, then take it back. But just do it now before you forget. I know with myself, sometimes I can get immersed in a video and forget to do that. So how to farm Chia, a guide to XCH token farming using a hard drive. And I'm going to get into Tron TRX, BitTorrent, how they can partner up, what green mining means to them, and how it's all intertwined and not very obvious. So, Chia Network recently entered the cryptocurrency scene and has quickly piqued the interest of many miners and investors. So, Bram, the creator of uh, Chia, is the originator of uh, BitTorrent, if, for those of you that don't know. There are several reasons for this. First, the Chia blockchain operates using a novel proof of space and time POST protocol which means that the proof of the space used and time spent on the task is actually required to farm the cryptocurrency. Second, according to the creators of the currency Chia, XCH is an environmentally friendly coin and is not mined, rather it's farmed with the protocol needing low energy to generate new coins. So low energy is usually not a good thing, but with uh, cryptocurrency, it's becoming the ultimate buzzword because of what's been going on and how uh, Elon Musk originally brought some attention to the amount of, uh, uh, or re-brought attention rather, to the amount of energy that may be being used to mine Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and how it's not a good thing. So second, according to the creators of the currency Chia, uh, no, I did that already. So Gene Hoffman, president and chief operating officer of Chia Network, told Cointelegraph that the project's creator, Bram uh, Cohen, wanted to bring environmentally friendly friendliness to the world of cryptocurrencies. In the case of Chia, an unused hard disk drive, HDD, or a solid state drive, SSD, storage space, can be replaced with hashing power. So that's pretty cool. Basically, space that's just dead space, not doing anything, can generate dollars. Um, so I'll probably butcher the name, but Krizistov, Krizistov, Petrzak, who also worked on the POST, Pro, POST protocol, said the original model behind Chia was flawed. Hoffman added that started off, uh, Hoffman added, okay, so Hoffman added that the model, original model was flawed. So that started off a back and forth of Bram coming up with a poten with potential solutions and Krizostov proving them wrong until Bram proposed one that as Krizostov attempted to mathematically prove wrong, proved right. That guy Bram, he's amazing. So what is Chia Network? The main selling point of Chia farming is that participants don't need to use powerful GPUs and processors which are needed to mine Bitcoin BTC. So Chia can be farmed with an HDD or SSD which is an attractive proposition for those unable to afford the latest greatest video cards Hoffman explained and it's true. Um, it's a lot easier to mine with memory than to mine the way it's being done now once they streamline it, right? So it was totally designed from the ground up to be as or more secure than proof of work and far more decentralized while using a thousand to ten thousand thousand a thousand to ten thousand times less power per unit for security. To farm Chia, you could start with just a personal computer or a laptop of any kind. All you need is a processor with a clock speed of 1.5 gigahertz, gigahertz, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and a terabyte SSD or HDD. What do you think would happen if Tron and BitTorrent figured out a way to take their whole network, everyone, use everyone's computing power, mine off memory when computers are idle, have that mining processing power go to a collective pool and arrange for everyone to generate some green mining cryptos because they use Tron and BitTorrent. To farm Chia, you can start with just a personal computer or a laptop. We got all that. Next, users need to download the Chia blockchain client from the project's official website or directly from GitHub. Or maybe if you have BitTorrent, the way it's built, it can be built into it where the peer sharing, file sharing, becomes an advantage here. 
Then you create a wallet and save a private key, after which you can start the farming process by clicking the Create Plot button. Farming one block gives a reward of 64 Chia tokens, and the speed of farming depends on the disk storage capacity that's used. It is worth noting that for now, only individual users can farm Chia. They forgot to see there, it just says Hia, but it's Chia. Each individual farmer creates blocks, i.e. there is no need to join a pool to receive coins. According to the developers, this ensures the Chia network is decentralized. However, the project team is currently working on creating an official pool protocol that will be released soon regarding the upcoming release, said Hoffman, or Hoffman said. It is impossible for a farmer to cheat. Pools can only cheat by not paying out the agreed amount, and a farmer can leave a pool. I don't know if my screen's too high there. Okay. Um, no, I think you guys could see me fine. So, further, unlike nearly every cryptocurrency with pooling, the pools do not make blocks. Each individual farmer makes the blocks. That means it remains far more decentralized on top of the Chia blockchain being the largest ever blockchain by public node count. You know, the massive amounts of mining that was happening in China that's now moving around, that's not decentralized because there's a lot of connected the dots required in one specific place or a bunch uh, of places working together as a partnership. If it becomes more decentralized, which individual users are able to easily use their computers, that's a big one up, not only on the green mining and saving of energy, but the decentralization that you want to see happen in the industry for greater growth and greater control. If you don't have hardware and just want to buy Chia, this can be done through several crypto exchanges. You should keep in mind that in order to buy Chia, you first need to purchase a stable coin such as Tether, USDT, or Bitcoin, and then exchange it for Chia. How to build a Chia farm. By the way, Cointelegraph as usual. I always share my sources. I probably won't finish the entire article, so if you want to go and take a look and look at it in detail and go over it again and again, that's the place to go. Uh, a processor. Any processor with four cores. I wonder what the price of four core processor is going to be when, when this gets popular. Now would be the time to start buying them, right? Like Intel's Core i3, Core i5, or Core i7, or their AMD equivalents are suitable for mining Chia, a good choice would be the Intel Core 15, i5, rather, 11400, or the Core i5 10400, which can be purchased for around $150 to $170. Imagine buying those and reselling them when everyone's going nuts to find them and you can't. For even better productivity, it's advised, what an idea, to choose a processor with an integrated graphics card since one slot can be used to connect additional storage. Let's talk about storage now. So, the main piece of hardware required to farm the Chia token is the storage drives, which can be either SSDs or HDDs that support a SATA 3 interface. To farm XCH, it will be acceptable to use just the SSDs. However, it's better to use a combination of SSDs and HDDs since SSDs speed up the graphic process while HDDs are better at storing the actual graphs. It doesn't say actual there, but I added the word actual. Overall, you need at least 300 gigabytes of storage capacity, but it's beneficial to have more. It's always beneficial to have more. For example, two terabytes will be enough for the simultaneous generation of six graphs, while 10 graphs will require the purchase of a more spacious SSD or even several such devices. It is better to use high-speed SSDs that work through the M2 slot. Farmers will need to find models with a higher terabyte written TBW capacity and it is also better to have several external hard drives as they are easier to interchange. Wow, that's loud. As they are easier to interchange. As for the prices, well, there are a lot of HDDSs and SDDs on the market and they are not expensive. For example, a one terabyte Western Digital Purple HDD typically goes for around $50. So when choosing an SSD, it is worth remembering that at least 15% of the disk space should be left free in order to increase its durability and allow the drive to work properly. This will eliminate most problems with speed drops during operations. So Hoffman also drew attention to the fact 
that those who buy equipment specifically for chia farming only rely on used equipment. So that's interesting. For people buying specialized chia growing equipment, the first choice is, is recycled discs or used storage because the price is lower and they are suitable for chia farming where no user data is stored. When people were in a rush to buy specialized hardware, they opted for high pack capacity hard drives because they consume less power per terabyte and storage density. They, there are farmers using SATA, SAS, and USB drives, and we see a good mix of all of them. So the motherboard, I'll get into that for maybe a couple seconds. Preferably the motherboard should support SATA 3 and USB 3.0 ports. The same goes for PCI ports as well. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for coming. Uh, as usual, I hope this finds you healthy, happy, and I will see you on the next video. So we covered how to farm a bit of how to farm chia, how it all works using a hard drive. The future, I believe, is going to be not only green mining, but it's going to be memory based. See you soon, next time.